Hey everyone, my name is Mike Sipos and I'm the UF IFAS Extension Florida Sea Grant Agent in Collier County. And today we're gonna fillet one of my most favorite eating fish out there. It definitely beats grouper and snapper for me. Uh, it is the porgy. So this species right here is the jolt head porgy. There's a lot of different species of porgies out there and they're actually pretty difficult to identify. Although uh, a lot of the regulations are similar across those species, so you're safe there. But if you wanna watch the video, you can learn how to fillet it, learn more about the biology of this fish. And if you wanna read the description below, I include plenty of information that I might not be able to touch upon in the video. And if you could please, please, please take the survey link in the description and tell us how we did. It helps us justify the time and effort we spend on uh, my personal time catching this fish and uh, my work time researching them and making these videos for you guys. So please take that and we're gonna go ahead and move the camera so you can get a better look at my hands and we'll start filleting them. So here you go. Okay guys, so let's get started. This is our beautiful jolt head porgy. So this fish, to give you an idea for scale, is 6.8 pounds and measures 21 and a half inches to the fork right over there and 23 and a quarter inches to the tip of the tail and that's maximum total length. And this fish uh, is actually the largest uh, in species in the genus Calamus, which is uh, a lot of the porgy species that you're familiar with belong to and they can get up to 32 inches and weigh over 23 pounds. So the IGFA world record is 23 pounds, four ounces. And the, 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 the porgies belong to the Sparidae family, which includes sea breeds and other porgies. You might be familiar with those cousins, like the pinfish, the spot tail pinfish, the sea bream. Uh, there's other species of porgy out there that are really hard to tell apart. Um, they, they look very similar. So the knob porgy looks very similar to the little head porgy. And then this one actually looks really similar to the saucer eye porgy and the sheep's head porgy. And uh, then there's also the red porgy and the grass porgy. So the grass porgy is easy to identify. There's a little spot over here. The knobbed porgy and the little, uh, uh, the little head porgy, they have like a very like really sloped head like that and they differentiate from the blue markings on the face. Um, really the markings on the face are is a way that you can tell but I, I hate using color because um, color can fade in the cooler, it can fade, it can be uh, different if the fish is really active or if it's stationary, if it's you know been dead for a while. So what I like to look for and what's a way to identify a lot of the porgies is uh, that slope of the head. Some of the scientific papers out there actually have the exact angle of the slope of the head. Um, and then look for just general size of the fish. So, uh, you know, for a second, you know, I, knee jerk reaction was jolt head porgy. I thought it could be a saucer eye or sheep's head porgy, but then I looked up the world record for the saucer eye and that, that was actually one pound, eight ounces. So know the relative size of the porgy. If you have a 20 pound porgy, if you have a 15 pound porgy, it's probably not gonna be any other species out there besides the jolt head porgy, which is the largest species in that Calamus genus, which all the other porgies, which I mentioned beforehand, belong to. Um, so uh, another way you could tell with these is they'll have like a orange kind of corner of the mouth that's a little bit hard to see, but you can see it right over there. Um, they have 15 pectoral fin rays. Um, so this is the pectoral fin <laughs> that's like really splitting the hairs there, but there would be 15 separate segments that make them. And then uh, the 50 to 57 scales along the lateral line. Uh, but yeah, and the, the calamus is, uh, the, 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 the scientific name for this fish is uh, Calamus bahanado. And uh, that translates, the, the genus name is after a Greek myth, Kalamos, which is a character who actually drowned and he turned into a reed, like a reed, like a plant. So that could be characteristic of uh, the kind of environments that some of these porgies live in. Uh, a lot of the times it could be in like a sandy kind of environment with uh, scattered patches of grass because uh, they're big invertebrate and crustacean eaters. Um, and then Baja Nado is uh, that it translates to low swimming. So if you see this fish in the water, where do you think it swims? So its mouth is really uh, inferior below here, you know, below the, it's not a superior mouth, it's going upwards. So it's gonna be eating all those benthic organisms. So they, they swim uh, not up in the water column, but near the ocean floor. 
Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and uh, start filleting this fish and I'll start peppering some more facts in there. So these fish and other porgies will have a really big and pronounced head and you want to try to get as much meat as possible from them because they're super, super, super tasty. They're super white um, and hardly any red on the fillet. So you want to start you know, as close as you can to the, the front of the head. And I like to outline around that gill plate, really just feeling wherever it becomes soft and that's where you could cut. So I'm using a serrated knife to make this initial cut to keep uh, the edge on my, my regular fillet knife because uh, these scales are pretty thick. And then I'm gonna outline across the back using that dorsal fin as a guide. Yeah, so some of these features on these porgies, um, they, they can change almost with age and size because there's a good amount of allometric growth. So allometric growth means that there's unequal growth rates along like different parts of the fish. And that's pretty typical for a lot of organisms out there, but you might see pictures of these porgies out there and uh, some of their eyes might look larger, but as they grow, their eyes don't really grow in size. They just sort of more fill their body shape and size. So keep in mind for that, um, you know, keep in mind the sources that you're using to get your species identification. You know, when I was cruising the internet, like re reading up on these fish, um, there was a lot of confusion because, you know, there might be like a Pinterest kind of page that has a species, but that's somebody who isn't really uh, familiar with fish identification um, t telling you what kind of fish it is. So, you know, make sure that you're using like a very good trusted source for your fish identification. So I'm lifting up the fillet using the backbone as sort of a guide, skimming my knife across it like that. If you hear a noise, um, you know, you're getting the, the most meat out of it as possible. Uh, you, you have to go pretty much around the ribs. Uh, a lot of these porgies, even like the sheep's heads actually in that Sparidae family, and there's actually a sheep's head porgy too. Their ribs are really thick, so if you're gonna cut through them, some guys will like use like a, like a serrated power knife for that. Um, you know, you just have to <laughs> make way with going around them uh, unless you have a serrated knife and you really want to cut through those. So that's one side of the fillet there and you can see how white it is. And then we're going to take the other side of the fillet off and then skin them. Uh, so these fish will live around like the periphery of a lot of structures. So you could find them on a you know, like grass bottom and some environments. They have the typical Western Atlantic kind of species distribution from uh, Massachusetts, Rhode Island area to, um, that, uh, to down to Brazil. But a lot of those uh, species that we catch over here, you might see more so in South Florida or in the Caribbean. But they uh, inhabit those uh, sandy kind of rocky reef bottom. And I actually scuba dive, uh, scuba dive and I see these pretty often. And the, you could find them around shipwrecks too. But on around shipwrecks, they're not really hiding in between structures or anything. They're, they're really uh, going around the, the sand edge and eating those invertebrates that they find over there. So they'll find uh, uh, sea urchins, uh, they, they'll find crustaceans. Um, and you can see them rooting around sometimes in the sand. And they call them jolt heads because apparently they, they jolt after their prey, which I haven't seen in person, but I bet that would be pretty cool behavior to observe. So I am lifting the fillet and cutting over here. I'm sort of cutting through a little bit of that Y bone. And then I'm gonna full switch my knife. You don't need a switcher knife, it's just I know I got through the hardest part. So now I wanna use my sharper knife to get the most meat as possible because like I said this is one of my favorite eating fish. So this is the other part of the fillet here. Put this here, put this guy off to the side and start skinning them. So when you skin them uh, you want to bring your fillet to the edge of the table so your knife handle doesn't actually uh, hit the table and you can get flush with the surface. And you 
So sorry about that guys, it looks like my camera turned off. But uh, yep, it's still didn't fillet that one other side. We're gonna put that here and get my knife edge to the tip. Hold that skin down, sort of doing a sawing and pulling motion at the same time, using all parts of the blade. So if you start filleting, a lot of times you'll use the front third of your knife, but the, the other portions of the knife are still really sharp. Um, but the front third will dull a little quicker as you're cutting around the bones and stuff. So using the whole knife really helps you get a clean cut like that to do so. So we're gonna go ahead and take out this bloodline area too. So a good way of doing that is uh, trying to feel around for any sort of rib bones and meat right there. Um, I like to cut, cut out the entire bloodline. So I'm gonna start over here and pull down and then sort of match that on the other side. And there's nothing wrong with eating it. It just might have more of the little fishy flavor that people don't really like in seafood, but it is uh, still really great. And cut this out. Cut that out here. So there's a little bit left over. I can sort of shake. And my camera turned off again, but we are back. And I am going to start shaving the rest of that red off. Um, there you go. Uh, same thing with this other side, although I think I cut that out with that initial cut. Um, sometimes there could be a little bit of belly meat in there, you could eat that, but you know, feel around for bones if you don't want them, um, which people don't in fillets. So I'm going to cut this because I actually feel a little bit portion of uh, the bones right over there. Okay, so we got that done over here. Now let's move to the other side real quick and do that. So porgies, if you're not familiar with the family, uh, they're actually, or the, the, the genus Calamus, some of them are really pretty and they'll have like really striking blue markings on their face. So check those out. Uh, these jolt heads are actually some of the more drabby looking porgies, but um, they're tasty nonetheless. And I'd rather have a, a big one that tastes great than uh, to fillet a whole bunch of other small ones. So we're done with these fillets right here. And um, yeah, so that's Okay, so we're done with the filleting process, uh, but you know what? I want to try to see if I can get the otoliths out. I've never actually got the otoliths out of this porgy species, but uh, they're the first time for everything, right? So let me go ahead and uh, I usually use this sort of first notch in the gill plate as a guide to make my downward cut. Now I use a serrated knife. If you okay, let's see if the camera turns off one more time. So. Uh, I usually like to use this uh, front gill plate if I'm going to use that as a guide to make my initial cut to take out the otoliths. And then I'm going to cut straight down. So the camera might actually be shaking because it's uh, going to be on the table. But let's do a cut. Their heads are super hard. If you have a hacksaw or sawzall, you can use that as well. But make sure that you are careful because uh, fish are slippery. Um, and you can easily cut yourself. So I'm gonna cut down until I hear some sort of sound change. And that's usually an indicator that, so if you hear that sound change, that's usually an indicator that's saying that you're in uh, the brain cavity or the otic capsule where the otoliths are at. Um, but let's go ahead and pop it once you hear that sound change. And uh, we should be able to see those otoliths somewhere here. Get yourself a good pair of tweezers. Let me go grab mine. And dig around. So a lot of these benthic fish, fish that are Sorry guys, the camera keeps on turning off and I found out that it is saying it's getting too hot. So, yep, we're in the otic capsule brain cavity area. I pulled one of these otoliths out already. This is it right there. And a good way to tell if you're in the right place and if you're hitting the otolith is that you're gonna hear a sound change once you like hit the otolith area. So there's gonna be a left and a right one and there's actually three sets of otoliths. Although you're pulling the sagittal otolith, which is the largest otolith. So I have that one and I actually had the other one before the camera turned off, but let's see if we could find it. So if I'm poking around with a good pair of tweezers, you might hear sort of a dull noise and then you might hear like a like a sort of glassy kind of noise where you are skimming something um, that is made out of calcium carbonate so that's what the otolith is made out of so it's not really more so a bone as it is a stone uh, okay so that first one came easy the second one i had to dig for it a little bit but here it is that's another otolith. So here is our filleted out porgy. 
despite all the camera interruptions and the otoliths. So please uh, watch the video and read the description. Uh, check out our other videos and uh, answer the survey in the link below. Um, uh, thanks for watching, guys. Sorry for the camera mishaps and uh, stay tuned for other fish fillet species.